Oxford Read and Discover Level Five: Our World in Art by Richard Northcott, read by Christopher Ragland, published and copyright Oxford University Press, 2011. Introduction. Artists help us to look at our world. They look at places and people. And then they show them in pictures. Artists also show smaller things, flowers, fruit, or birds. Artists don't only make pictures. Sometimes they make sculptures with stone, metal, or wood. What things from our world do artists show in art? What types of art? Do you know what is your favorite type of art? Discover. Now read and discover more about our world in art. Chapter One: Cities. Cities are interesting places. There are lots of different buildings. Cities are also full of people, and all the people are different. Artists have always been interested in cities, and in the people who live in them. A city from outside. In about 1600, an artist called El Greco painted a picture of Toledo, a city in Spain. Toledo was an important city at that time. There were great buildings there. El Greco's painting shows Toledo from the countryside. The city looks quiet. The sky is dark, and there's going to be a storm, but the city looks strong. Inside a city. Now let's go inside a city. There are streets and buildings, and there are lots of people. It's fun to watch people in cities, and artists like painting them. In 1876, Gustave Caillebotte painted some people on a bridge in Paris. A man and a woman are crossing the bridge and talking. Another man is leaning on the bridge and watching something. A dog is walking across the bridge too. When we look at this painting, we think that we are on the bridge. We think this because the artist has used perspective. Perspective. You can't go inside a painting. It's just a picture on a flat piece of paper or canvas. Sometimes we think that we're inside a painting, because the artist has used perspective. When there's perspective, the lines in a picture go to a place on the horizon, called the vanishing point. This painting of New York is by Ippolit Sabron. The tops of the buildings, the windows, and the lines in the snow go to the vanishing point. The vanishing point looks far away, but the horses look near. Now look again at the painting on page five. Where is the vanishing point? Artists don't always use perspective. When there's no perspective, everything looks near. There's no vanishing point, and there are no buildings far away. A Russian artist called Natalia Goncharova painted this big picture of a Russian city. It was scenery for a ballet. There are hundreds of towers and domes in her painting, but there's no perspective. Discover. Artists can play with perspective, 
and make amazing shapes. Look carefully at this shape. Which is the front of the shape? Which is the back? Chapter 2 Indoors A painting of the inside of a building is called an interior. When artists paint interiors, they often use perspective so that we can see through one room into another room. Mr. Kong's House In this interior from China, we can see a big room with tables, chairs, and five big lamps. At the back of the room, there are two doors. We can look through the doors and see another, smaller room. The room is in the house of a rich man called Mr. Kong. Maybe he's the man in the blue coat who's playing a type of guitar, but we don't really know. We also don't know the name of the artist. Usually, artists write their signature in small letters on their paintings, but not always. The Boy with the Bread One day, a boy went to the baker's for some bread. Then, he went to a big house, walked through the courtyard, and knocked on the door. A woman opened the door and took the bread. We see this little story in this painting by a Dutch painter called Peter de Hoch. The artist used perspective to show us the house, the courtyard, and the street outside. Look at the lines on the floor. They go to a vanishing point that's behind the building and far away. Light from outside. In this interior, the artist shows a room in Cairo in Egypt long ago. Two young women are watching an old man who is writing in a book. Look carefully at this painting and you will find lots of small, interesting things. For example, three cats are sleeping on the floor. They like this place because it's warm. We can't see outside, but we know that it's sunny. The artist shows the sunlight that's coming through the door. Stores Busy stores are fun because lots of things happen there. Customers look, talk, and buy things. Sales clerks help the customers, show them things, and take their money. Stores are interesting places, so artists like painting them. A Spanish artist called Luis Paret y Alcázar was born in 1746. He painted this store interior where lots of things are happening. There's a woman in a beautiful dress. A little baby wants to touch her. A man is sitting and a sales clerk is showing him things. These people are important customers, so everyone in the store is busy. Chapter 3 Outdoors Paintings of the countryside are called landscapes. In a landscape, the people are usually very small, and sometimes there aren't any people. The most important thing in a landscape is the countryside. Mountains Many artists like painting mountains. Sunlight and shadows on mountains can look amazing. Jose Velasco was born in Mexico in 1840. He painted beautiful landscapes of mountains. In this landscape, Jose Velasco puts big shapes together. Near us, 
There are some plants. They are big, bright, and green. Far away, there's a mountain with snow on the top. It looks big and cold. Oceans and Islands Ando Hiroshige was born in Japan in 1797. He painted busy streets, but he's also famous for his landscapes and pictures of the ocean. His pictures often surprise us because he put very different shapes together. He liked putting big, strong shapes at the front of his paintings. For example, Look at his picture of the ocean. The biggest things in the picture are the waves, and they look very near. There are beautiful landscapes in Chinese art, too. Some of them are on bowls and plates. This plate shows lots of small, rocky islands with houses. People in a Landscape When Italian artists painted an important person, they often painted a beautiful landscape behind the person. Benazzo Gazzoli was a painter from Florence, now in Italy. He was born about 600 years ago. He painted this picture of a rich and important man with his friends. They are riding through the countryside. This landscape is very clean and pretty. Discover! Benazzo Gazzoli put his face in his painting. He's this man who is wearing an orange hat. Can you find him in the big painting? Old Maps A map shows the roads, rivers, and cities in a country. In the past, maps were different from maps today. The artists painted little pictures on the maps. Look at this map from 1625. It shows the southeast coast of North America. For the mountains, the artist painted lots of little mountains. For the forests, there are tiny trees. The artist drew lines to show the water in the ocean. Can you see the three ships? Chapter 4 Still Lifes Paintings of flowers are called still lifes. A still life can also be a painting of food, bottles, or musical instruments. Anything that doesn't move and is still. Flowers. Everyone can draw a flower. You just draw five or six petals and color them. That's easy, but try to paint flowers like the ones in this painting. That's much harder. This beautiful still life. Is by Jan van Kessel, an artist from Flanders in northern Europe. He was born in 1626. If you look carefully, you can also see some animals. There's a butterfly and a parrot. Food. This still life with fruit is by Paula Modazon Becker. She was born in Germany in 1876. There's a big piece of melon, some pears, an orange, and maybe some strawberries. This still life is very different from the painting by Jan van Kessel. The artist didn't use many colors. There's no pretty bowl and no butterflies. We can't see the front of the table. So the fruit looks near. Behind the fruit, the edge of the table looks like the horizon. The shapes of the fruit 
are as strong as the shapes of rocks or mountains in a landscape painting. Discover. About two thousand five hundred years ago in Greece, an artist called Zeuxis painted fruit. His picture was good, and birds tried to eat the fruit in the painting. Wooden sculptures. Not all still lifes are paintings. This wooden sculpture is a still life. The paintbrushes and the tools are made of wood. The book is a very thin piece of wood. The artist used sharp tools, but he didn't break the wood. That's really amazing. The artist was called Grinling Gibbons. He was born in 1648 in the Netherlands. He went to the United Kingdom when he was about 20 years old, and he made sculptures for big houses and important buildings. He died in 1721, but his family still makes beautiful things with wood. Shapes and shadows. The paintbrushes in Grinling Gibbons' sculpture look like real paintbrushes. The guitar in this painting doesn't look like a real guitar. This guitar is a funny shape. It's on a table, and the table is a funny shape too. The black shadows on the table and on the floor. Are big, strong shapes. This still life is by a Spanish artist called Juan Gris. He painted it in 1920. Things in Juan Gris's paintings often have funny shapes. They surprise us, so we think about them more. Chapter Five. Machines. Machines can be beautiful. Planes are smooth and shiny, so maybe they are beautiful machines. What about the engine in a car? Engines are often dark and dirty. Are car engines beautiful? What do you think? Beautiful or ugly? An artist from Ukraine called Grigory Shisko painted a building site in 1966. He painted cranes and other big machines. In front of the machines, there's a man who works on the site. He looks relaxed with these machines. This isn't a pretty picture, but the artist shows us an interesting moment. People and machines are working together. Factories. In the museum in Detroit, in the USA, you can see twenty-seven big paintings by a famous Mexican artist called Diego Rivera. The paintings show workers in a car factory. Detroit is famous for its car factories. The artist shows us people's movements when they work with machines. The factory looks like one big machine, but the workers are not robots. Diego Rivera's people are all different. They are interesting, and sometimes funny. They are people like you and me. The paintings are called. Detroit industry. Diego Rivera painted them on the walls of the museum in 1933. Paintings on walls are called murals. Robots. Try drawing a person, then try drawing a robot. How are people and robots different from each other? Robots are made of metal. They have lots of straight lines. 
People have soft hair and soft skin, but robots are hard. When artists make robots, they use materials that are usually in machines. Materials like metal and plastic. This sculpture of a robot is made from old machines and parts of machines. There are pieces of computers. There's also part of a calculator. Can you find it? Flying machines. In 1452, an artist called Leonardo da Vinci was born in Florence, now in Italy. He was interested in machines. He had lots of ideas for flying machines, and he drew them in his notebooks. This is amazing, because Leonardo da Vinci lived about four hundred years before the first planes. In about fourteen ninety, he drew this idea for a flying machine. It looks like a helicopter. Leonardo da Vinci was an amazing man. He was interested in everything: machines, animals, science, and the human body. He was one of the greatest artists of all time. Discover. Leonardo da Vinci wrote with his left hand. He also wrote from right to left. The writing in his notebooks looks like writing reflected in a mirror. Chapter six. Light. There are different types of light: light from the sun or the moon, electric light, and light from candles. With pencils and paints, artists can show these different lights. Candles. A French artist called Georges de Latour was good at painting the light of candles. He painted this picture of a mother and her baby in about 1650. The room is dark, but one of the women has a candle. We can't see the candle because the woman's hand is in front of it. We can see candlelight on the baby's head. The artist used different colors to show light and shade. Reflections. Light shines on people's faces and clothes, then it bounces off. This is called reflection. Painters use reflections to show different types of fabric in people's clothes. For example, in about 1512, an artist called Titian painted this portrait of a man. The man is wearing a jacket made of a soft, shiny fabric. If you look carefully at the man's arm, you can see the different gray colors that show the reflections from his jacket. Titian was from Venice, now in Italy. He was good at mixing paint and making new colors. Discover. Titian said, "A good painter needs only three colors: black, white, and red." Moonlight. Moonlight is not as bright as sunlight. When the moon shines, there are no colors. Everything is gray. In 1938, a Japanese artist called Kawase Hasui drew a garden in the moonlight. We can't see the moon in his picture, but we know that the moonlight is strong, because he used different gray inks for the garden. This type of picture is called a woodblock print. To make a woodblock print, artists draw on flat pieces of wood. Then, they cut the wood with a sharp tool, 
to make the different parts of the picture. They put ink on the wood, then press a piece of paper on it. They use a different piece of wood for each color, but they press the same piece of paper on each piece of wood. Sunlight. The sun is shining. People are sitting by the river. It's a hot day. No one wants to move. Georges Seurat was a French artist who painted this picture of people by the river near Paris in 1884. The painting is made of thousands of little dots. Georges Seurat used these dots to give the idea of bright sunlight. Discover. Georges Seurat painted different colored dots close together. You only see them if you go near to the painting. If you stand two or three meters away, the different colors mix and make new colors. Chapter Seven, Movement. People in paintings don't move, but artists can use lines and shapes to give the idea of movement. Let's look at some examples. Dancing. In this painting of dancers, the artist shows us the movements of a crowd. The crowd is dancing at a party or a rock concert. The dancers are moving fast. How many people are there in this painting? It's hard to know. We can see heads. Arms and legs here and there, but most of the bodies join together in the movement, and we can't see them very well. This painting is by an artist from Nigeria called Bayo Erigbogbe. He painted it in 2000. Sport. In a soccer match, there are lots of different movements at the same time, like running. Jumping and kicking. In 1908, a French artist called Henri Rousseau painted some soccer players. Each player is moving in a different way, but they are all watching the ball. They look funny because they are wearing striped clothes. They are playing a funny type of soccer too. One player. Is touching another player, who is going to touch the ball. Umberto Boccioni was an Italian artist. In his drawing of a cyclist, he shows lots of movement. The cyclist's legs are moving very fast, so it's hard to see them. Wind. We can't see wind, but we can see what it does. Trees bend, leaves go everywhere, and people's hats fly away. An Austrian artist called Ida Schwetzleman made these small sculptures of women in 1926. She uses the women's shapes to give us the idea of a strong wind. Their bodies are bending, and they are holding their hats to stop them blowing away. You can't see the horizon in this painting of a storm on the ocean. The water and the sky join together, and the waves are enormous. The artist's name is Ivan Ivazovsky, and he was from Russia. He painted this storm in 1868. He mixed gray, white, and green colors to show the strong movements of the wind and the water. Speed. When you're in a fast car or a train, try looking at the ground outside. You can't really see it. It's just lots of lines that move very fast. A British artist called Philip William May painted this car in 1929. This was the fastest car in the world at that time. 
we think that we are moving at the same speed as the car. We can see the car well, but the ground is made of lots of lines. Discover. If you want to show movement in your drawings, you can add lines. Chapter Eight: Art in Our World. Are there any sculptures or murals in a town that you know? It's fun when art is part of the place where we live. Streets and parks are more interesting if there's art for everyone to enjoy. Art near the ocean. In Jeddah, in Saudi Arabia, there's a beautiful park called the Corniche. It's near the ocean. And it's full of amazing art. One artist has used old boats to make a type of sculpture. The boats are on big white blocks. They are near the ocean, but they can't sail away. This type of sculpture is called an installation. In installations, artists use things that we know. But they show them in a new and different way. Giant bees. The walls of big buildings are a good place for sculptures or installations. Everybody can see them when they visit the building, or if they are just walking by. On the front of a building in Melbourne, in Australia, there are some big golden bees made of metal. There's one big bee at the top, and twelve smaller bees. The sculpture is by an Australian artist called Richard Stringer. He thinks that a city is like a beehive. The people who live there are always with lots of other people, like bees in a beehive. A woman in a park. In Barcelona, in Spain. There's a big sculpture by a Spanish artist called John Miro. The sculpture is in a park, and it's called Woman and Bird. John Miro started with the idea of a woman and a bird. Then he played with different shapes and colors. He loved bright, sunny colors like red and yellow. He used them. In many of his paintings and sculptures, for woman and bird, he used thousands of bright colored tiles. John Miro was eighty-nine years old when he made this sculpture. He's very famous in Spain. His art is in museums all around the world. A building, or a parcel. In 1995, two artists wrapped a building. Cristo and Jean Claude wrapped the Parliament Building in Berlin, the capital of Germany. They used more than 100,000 square meters of fabric, and more than 15 kilometers of rope. The building looked like a big parcel. The wrapping only stayed on the building for about two weeks. In that time, thousands of people came to see the building and took photos. They knew the building well, but they saw it in a new way. Art shows our world in a different way. When we look at our world in art, we can learn something new.